God has given you those children yeah. for you to discipline them. You need to stop trying to be their BFF, yeah. be their friend, and be their mother. We're so excited that you're joining us for this like series, this mommy marathon of mommy learning marathon. how to parent your kids well and be your be your kids' mom. Uh, really, only boys. Sorry. Only boys, though. Yeah, <laughs> we're just it's a little segregated today. Uh, but I really want to talk a little bit about, um, or we want to talk about how do we create boundaries in our home and and you know a lot of you guys ask questions about toddler tantrums and what do I do about you know how do I structure my home so that I'm the one in charge and or whatever it is. And uh, we kind of went back to the basics. Like we yeah, thought we, we had, should go back to the basics. There was a lot of specific questions, but the very basic is that God has given you those children yeah. for you to discipline them. You need to stop trying to be their BFF, yeah. be their friend, and be their mother. Be their mother. And then I also want to say in this, you don't have to be their father. You mm. just have to be the mother. You can't be the father and the mother you need That's to great. be the mother. And uh, God takes this very serious. We found a kind of a humorous scripture uh, <laughs> that I felt like I should share. Um, it's Proverbs 30, <laughs> verse 17. And I'm just going to go ahead and bust it out from the message translation. But it pretty much is the same information. All of it says, uh, an eye that disdains a father and despises a mother. Now, we've all seen our kids roll their eyes, uh -huh. act annoyed. Uh -huh. That eye will be plucked out by <laughs> wild vultures and consumed by young eagles. Listen, you don't want this to happen <laughs> no. to your kids. You need to discipline them so that they don't do this kind of stupid um, stuff. Yeah. We don't want their eyes plucked out. No, we don't. We don't want eagles. eagles. <laughs> no way. So we're giving you permission to discipline your children. And a lot yeah. of moms have, like, they feel like if they're not perfect, they can't discipline. Right. Or and if they react you know, stressed out, right. they can't discipline. They're going to ruin their kids. Yeah. And, you know, I think part of the difficulty as a mom is that we are so much of the nurture in the home. So sometimes it's like, gosh, how do I, you know, give, put a lot of boundaries, but I'm also nursing this baby and holding this baby and, and cultivating. And then how do I do both at the same time? And so I feel like moms oftentimes will set down the discipline card so they can pick up the nurture card. And, and the Bible is really clear that, you know, if we don't discipline, yeah. you know, discipline the Bible is says, nurture. Yeah. It says in Proverbs yeah. 13, 24, it says the refusal to correct is a refusal to love. Yeah, and that's, so that's pretty clear. It's huge. Like God loves us and he gives us boundaries and parameters. And you know, one thing we talk about is, you know, we always say, I laugh, but there's probably once a day with my kids that I say, you know, I'm the boss of you. And my husband <laughs> said, why do you say that? And I said, it's not for them. It's for me. I have to remind yeah, myself. Yeah, we're telling ourselves I'm who in we charge. are. I'm in yeah. charge. This moment is mine. But you know, I think one thing is really important is that we have boundaries and structures for our kids. And specifically when they're little, you know, we, you know, have you ever had an infant when the infant is born, they tell you to wrap that baby. And have you ever taken that blanket off and they kind of do this? The arms flare They like out. panic. Yes, yeah. We used because... to torture our kids and watch them do that. Like that. It's <laughs> called the star response. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and so, you know, that's how we are as littles. We need boundaries. We need to know what our parameters are so we can feel safe. And, and there's a healthy, uh, you know, a healthy experience. So for our children, we have boundaries. Yeah, and then we were talking last night when we were prepping for this. And, you know, Havala, I think you and I both had the same approach with our kids. You know, when my kids were coming up, it, you know, we, we were raised different. We were raised kind of like where I was. I'm a lot older. So I'm, being 55, I was more raised like, you know, children should be seen and not heard yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, but, but then it kind of switched to... You are the center of the universe. <laughs> you so. are the most important person in the world. You're the most beautiful. You're the most gifted. You're the most talented. Mm -hmm. Well, people that actually believe that about themselves are not nice people. Mm -hmm. They actually think everybody should serve them. And when I had kids, True. I said, you know what? My kids are not the center of the universe. Our kids were added into our lives. Yep. We're their parents. We're, our life isn't to revolve around them. Our life is to train them. Mm -hmm. We told our kids that you know, play is a privilege. Yeah. You know, work is, you're part of a family. You carry your load. We get to do extra things, but we're not going to make you the center of the universe because we're here to discipline you. Right. And we're, you know, and you were saying the same thing yeah. with your kids. Yeah, we definitely that, have there's boundaries. There's no boundaries. Yeah. When you think you're the center of the universe, no. you have no boundaries. No. I mean, it's, a, it's really hard to, that your kid doesn't have a, a more of a life than you do. I mean, this is what we're facing oftentimes is yeah. people are saying, can we have a play date? And I have four kids. Can I have a play date with every one of your children? I'm like, I haven't seen my husband, you know, in, in five days. 
days, I'm so sorry, but I'm going to have date night versus like, you know, managing my child's social life. So it is very unique. I think what's really important is that we understand that everything, the, the boundaries and the structures that we give um, have to come out of a core value of what we believe about our families. So, you know, if I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants and anything that gets me mad, well, mom's mad today. You don't know if this is a big deal I'm to her. To period tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Like all of a sudden, you know, no one does anything around here and you're upset and then mom goes on this this mission to get everyone to work but then tomorrow she's happy and there's everything goes out the window well so it's inconsistent it's inconsistent that's what hurts our kids so having parameters that allow our kids to know what is expected is very important and one thing we do in our home again we talk about discipline I'm talking about where they feel the consequences of their choice whether that's good or bad you will be rewarded because listen when we choose things that are right and we do the right thing guess what there is a reward to that God God rewards us for living with in ways that that mm -hmm. um, that are followed according to the word and what he says our life will go well the Bible says but then when you don't do the Bible says there's consequences so in our home we're really clear about the consequences and we've learned our kids I'm sure you have this too we have four boys and one of our kids you know we could we could do we could try to spank them we could try to put them in timeout but the truth is for this kid if you take something from him that he loves if it's the iPad time or if it's Legos or if it's the toy he just got yeah. it's devastating so we kind of find out where it hurts them and then it and we're allowed to like go wait that's going to change their behavior another one of our kids he's so social yeah. that if you say go sit on your bed he's devastated but yeah. my other kid loves being by himself and would take it as a benefit yeah, so you have to read. figure that out yeah what what where is it going to affect them and then one thing we've kind of implemented recently is um, if you're going, we call it hassle time, but if you're going to hassle me, like, hey, mom, can I do this? Mom, can I do this? Mom, can I do this? We start to say, you owe me hassle time. You owe me, you've been hassling me. You're taking my time by me, by you asking something. I've already given you instruction. Yeah. So you know what? Mom has spent time doing this. Why don't you go into the dishwasher and that would help mom just really buy some time. And so what we've done with our kids is if they have an attitude that they can't get over, oftentimes I will ask them to do things until they have a good attitude about it. And so we get our house clean, we have a benefit of that, but it also I find that when kids do things when they are, and I again, this is what I've, I'm seeing in my boys, when you give them a job to do and they do it, it builds confidence in them. And when we do things behind them and we don't let them to actually do things like empty the dishwasher, or take the trash out or whatever to clean their room and we're doing it for them, we're actually sending the message that you are not good enough and you don't have the ability to do it. And so part of that is teaching our boys, you have the ability to do these things. And I have found with our boys at you're, least. But you're also teaching them that if they prolong it long enough, Mom will just do Mom it. Mom will do it. So you're yes. actually training yes. them to have you work. Because my boys, it's true. I would tell my boys to do something, and then I would just do it, and they would they would laugh. You wait Because they were enough. actually going to do it, but I just kind of start doing it. And they said, didn't you just tell us to do that? And I'd be like, oh, yeah. So, so yeah. That's a really so good you're, point. You're training your kids that they, you don't really mean what you say, and they can mm -hmm. be irresponsible. And, and you, you're just and I love your carry your load. Like we've, yeah. we took that. Yeah. That was something you yeah. gave me yeah. where you're like, all of our boys carry their load and yeah. Or, yeah and and they still it. do that. They still do that. And you know, really? when, when John was traveling, you know, I was like a single mom and I, I had know. four kids. I and so, imagine. so I made the, I made the dinner and I'm just going to say, you know, my kitchen's clean right now. That's not normal. <laughs> That's not what it normally looks like. When I make dinner, I don't know why I feel like I have to use every, every single pot. counter space. <laughs> no, just counter space. <laughs> counter space. I make messes. And so the deal is I make dinner and they clean up. Yep. They clean up. They set the table. I started my kids very young. You start mm -hmm. them doing stuff. Mm -hmm when they're young and you don't want to make work always a punishment yeah. because part of that is just being part of a part family. Of family you carry your load you you set the table one That's of them great. has the job of setting the table another one has to you know clearing the table washing dishes drying dishes you've got to give them permission to not do it perfectly and um and that's okay but you got to start them somewhere you do you have to start them and i i think what's important too is you know really going down to the basics if they're living it's whose home is it it's your home Whose stuff is it? It's yours. And, and when my kids, when I find that they are, they get very entitled, these are my toys, this is my room, this is, and I feel that we're like, we have to remind them, you know, we love you, sweetheart, but this is all on loan. We love you, but this is, this is, you did, you know, obviously you did this and you had your allowance and you earned that, but, but we are all part of a family and this mm -hmm. isn't, I did my part, these are my things. We, we really teach them what it looks like to be part of a team and part of it, we call it Team Cunnington, but you know, yeah. there's a team. That's awesome. You know, uh, Havila, you were talking about the boundaries. You know, we told our kids 
um, we somebody had shared a, a little phrase for us when we taught to our kids. We would tell our kids, obedience is right away, all the way, happy way. And That's we great. would talk to them about the scripture. Yeah. That God doesn't just look at our actions, but he looks at the attitude of the heart. And I think a lot of times, and something you'd already touched on, I would just love to unpack it, is that our kids don't have clear direction from us. True. And so when I was crazy mommy, when I had, you know, the baby on my breast and yelling to everybody, <laughs> waving a spank spoon, everybody, everybody stop. You know, when I was doing that, my kids were like, she's crazy. She's crazy. I mean, I was talking about this last night the dinner after dinner and I asked Austin and Austin was like, I don't remember yet. I was like, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Cause I felt it. I felt it very We've strongly, it. but, but I remember I sat down with him and I said, you know what? Mommy has been disobeying God. Mm. Mommy has been disobeying God. You know how I've been yelling when I, I should have just said it one time. Mm. You know how I've been like, like trying to grab you with a baby in my breast, like slapping at you. Yeah, that was that was not right. That was not clear. <laughs> mommy, God had a talk with mommy, and they're all like, oh my gosh. God had a talk. God had a talk with mommy. <laughs> mommy is not disciplining yeah. you. Mommy is reacting. Mommy is not disciplining you. And when mommy doesn't discipline you, God disciplines me. So I said, right away, all the way, happy way. So then I would act it out. I would say, okay, so let's say I come upstairs and you guys are watching Veggie Tales and there's toys out everywhere. And I say, hey guys, I need you to pick up this playroom. We're gonna eat in 20 minutes. So everybody pick up. And then I go downstairs. If I come back upstairs and they're still mm. saying in their head, they're saying, I'm just gonna watch one more silly song. In their heart, they want to obey me. In their heart, they're like, we're going to obey. Yeah. Just not yet. Yeah. Not to, I said, if it's not right away, mommy's going to come back up and she's going to say, this room is a mess. You did not obey me. That's right. I said, I'm going to see, I'm not going to see obedience. I'm going to see, no, I can't see what's in your heart. That's great. I'm going to see disobedience. So right away. And I said, now you can ask me, mom, can we do this after this? And then we can mm. talk about, so I, we had a little thing. And then all the way means you clean it all up. You don't shove it under the sofa. Right. You, you do it with excellence. You do and then in a happy way, you're like, oh, clean. You, know, you don't stomp your foot, right. you don't roll your eyes, you don't storm out, because if you do any of those three things, we have to discipline you. Yep. I'm like, I don't want to, but this is what God says. God right. says that mommy has to discipline you. And it's That's interesting, because really it says, listen to the command of your father and the instruction of your mother. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the dads will give commands, but the mother gives the practical outworking of that. And so very good. you can give your kids clarity on how to do that, but you can't expect a clear response if they don't have clear direction. Yeah, and that, and that is what we do. We oftentimes, because we don't want to take the time to teach, we'd rather just order, get everyone to do what we want them to do. We've become this Hulk in the house, get everyone to do it, but then ultimately no one knows what to do next. Yeah. Um, so we we used to have the same thing all the way right away. We say with a happy heart. So it's yeah. it's very similar. Yours is sweeter. And well, you know, I actually yours is right easier to like say. Uh, but and again, you know, I think I think as well. I love um, what the Bible talks about in Proverbs thirteen one. It says that foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But I love how the message says it. It says yeah. intelligent children listen to their parents, and foolish children do their own thing. And uh, one of my friends had, had said this to me, but in the Hebrew, foolishness means conspiring against authority. And I think this is really We've all important. Seen it. Yeah, is that in, in the heart of your child, um, although they are loving and that you want to eat them because they're so cute, the truth is, is that they have that sin nature. They have a part of them that wants to do their own thing, run, mm -hmm. run the house, be in charge, be. And so being willing to go, you know what, this is something that need, they need to be trained in. This isn't something that's going to come natural. I'm not going to love this out of them. They need to know that how they act has consequences and that will make them healthy adults. It'll make them help, healthy leaders. And uh, God does that with us as well. He, he helps us uh, train our souls, mind, will, and emotions to be healthy as well. So all that to say, you know, with our kids, I always like to say, you know, connection is the most important. So just because you're doing what I want you to do doesn't mean that you're connected. So uh, part of that happy heart is the part that says, I'm doing this because, with joy. And that allows them to challenge their attitudes and their beliefs of how, how am I going to respond? So, uh, and, and, you know, the Bible does talk very clearly. Discipline turns to delight. So there is a part of that. But yeah, our boys are the same way. And it's always a challenge. This isn't like, I'm going to say this three times, memorize this, and you'll be fine. Like, this is a daily. Like, we have the four boys at home, and every day you'll hear me yell, you know, do it all the way, right away with a happy heart. You know, did you yeah. find your smile? You know, and I'm doing, and I'm, I mean, I'm doing all of that. 
Yeah. Um, but I have to remind myself what I'm expecting. And that is, do I expect it right away? And then oftentimes uh, we don't follow through. So we do a lot of threats. I'm going to take all your toys away. You know, I'm going to yeah. spank when we get home. And we never follow through. So my, my husband would say, I lied to my children. You, you do. You, you do. You because you're time. panicking. You panic yeah. and you're like trying to get them to be motivated. Uh, you know, so this is, ne we are never coming here again. And I remember there was one time when we were loaded up to Disneyland and we had, you know, saved up all of our money and packed up. We were driving there and one of the kids was, was acting, screaming in the back because we had all four boys. And I remember going, we're not going to go to Disneyland. And my husband looked at me and was like, really? Like, is that even, can you really, is that even really say on that? the table? Yeah, like, <laughs> seriously? And I, and I just, I kind of looked at him like, it's none of your business. You know, I, was like, <laughs> I panicked because obviously he was calling my bluff. Uh, but I think it's important to have realistic, um, uh, real, realistic disciplines. And then when I get home, there's nothing harder as a mom to, than to follow through when everyone's happy again. That is so hard for me when we'll go to Trader Joe's and we have two carts and the kids in this kid and, and I'm saying, you know, mommy's going to do something. When we get home, you're going to have to go sit on your bed. When we get home, mommy's going to, you know, spank you. This is what it looks like. And then everyone gets happy on the way home. And then when you and get you're home, like, oh, you're like, oh, it it's fine. Don't, but but the next time you're out, they're not going to believe you. So part of that follow through is, okay, I need you to go in the bedroom and wait for mommy. And one thing that we do is I don't discipline, we don't discipline out of anger. So that's really key. God doesn't discipline us out of anger and we're, we're again, how they see us is how they see the, the hand of God in their life. So I will send them into the room and, and it, as long as it takes for me to calm down, yeah. that's very key in my life. I don't care if they're in there for an hour, mommy has to do it with a controlled spirit, a part of me that knows what's going on. And, and we ask them to tell us, what did you do wrong? And, and I need them to be able to reiterate to me, this is what I did. Again, as they get older, not all of them are, no, but even my three-year-old can reiterate Oh, they can totally reiterate. Mm -hmm. They're way say, they're way smarter than they're sharp. They yeah, and and um, you know I think that this is a topic that needs more than one session. I know. And <laughs> so we are going to wrap up this session, but we definitely need to yeah. go into some stuff and and talk about this. And so first and foremost, you know I don't I don't know where you are mm -hmm. in your discipline process, but I want you to know I, I want you to know you are an authority. Yeah. And we are given authority for the protection the provision and the direction or discipline of our kids. Yeah. It's not to be abused, but you have authority and maybe um, you don't feel that. And we're gonna talk about maybe if you've lost some of your authority, how to get it back and how to come into a place of healthy discipline. So thanks Love for that. joining us. Mm -hmm. Okay, you mom of men, I am so excited about this third action point. now. I don't know if your kids are running your house right now. I don't know if you think, wait, my house is completely a disaster zone. We have no boundaries. We have no discipline. Hey, doesn't mean it can't change today. So I want you to have the conversation like I had with my children where you can say, hey, remember how mommy's been yelling and she shouldn't? Remember how mommy's been slapping at you, grabbing at you? I'm not doing any of that anymore. I'm going to say it one time. I'm gonna say it one time, and then you begin to model what that one time looks like. When I say it one time, then obedience means right away, all the way to completion, and a happy way. I know Havla said a happy heart, but they're not gonna usually start with a happy heart. If they just begin to do it with a happy way, though, they're gonna end up having a happy heart. So we want your kids to have a happy, way and a happy heart and they're going to go down this course so i don't know what that conversation looks like in your house that was our way all the way right away happy way so easy for me to remember i'm not that particularly smart i can only do three things but have those conversations with your kids you know have them act it out what does that look like if mommy says go clean your room does right away mean after i get done watching a movie does right away mean whenever i feel like it, or does right away mean right away and have that conversation set them up to win you don't want to set them up to fail you don't want to set yourself up to be chasing them you want to set them up to win god has given you authority to be their mother this authority was given to you to give them direction to give them instruction, to give them protection, and give them provision. If you have given away your authority and the children are running the house, take it back. Have your authority, get those boundaries in place, and be consistent with your discipline so your kids know what to expect. Right away, all the way, happy way. You can do this today.